Isla. Poor in the kingdom of God. Okay. There are more. Hungry. Okay. Weak. 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 Those who weep. Yeah. Okay. Hate you and exclude you and revile you and spurn your name as evil on account of the Son of Man. show up in both lists and write them down. Choose three that will show up in both lists. And they may be worded slightly differently. Um, where do we write it down, sir? Under the last one. sermon in the plane, right? Because those who are poor in spirit are poor in the kingdom of God. Those who hunger are hunger, hungry. Those who weep are those who mourn. And when people hate you or revile you for his name's sake. All of the sermon in the plane is present here. The sermon of the mount expands upon it. So. <coughs> Again. These are probably different opportunities that Jesus took to teach what he wanted his disciples to know, what they needed to know. All right, the next thing. To what? <coughs> okay, Jesus came not to blank the law, but to blank. This is in Matthew. Huh? He did come to preach, 
But he came to do more than that. Because like John the Baptist came to preach. Um, not really. There, Jesus actually doesn't give any new laws. He just <coughs> clarifies the misunderstanding of the law as was practiced at the time. Jack. Um, he's come to um, fulfill the promises of the God in the Old Testament. Okay, so we're getting pretty close there. He came to fulfill the promises. But one of the ways that he did that was every law that was given to mankind, Jesus kept perfectly. So he fulfilled the law because the only way you can be righteous is to keep the law perfectly. Raise your hand if you have kept the law perfectly. No. Good call. Wait. Except Jesus. Except Jesus. Yeah. All right. So Jesus came to fulfill it. And part of that fulfilling was fulfilling of righteousness so that when he died, the sacrifice did atone for our sins. If Mr. Harkins dies on a cross for your sins, does that do anything for you? No. 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 So now, part of that is because Jesus had already done it. Part of it is, I have lots of my own sins. Like on a daily basis. <coughs> Sometimes, I'm not as nice as I should be. <coughs> it happens rarely, but sometimes. Do you have an opinion on that, Jack? No. All right. You should, because that happens a lot. All right. To what two things does Jesus compare the disciples? So, ladies... You have two verses. Look on your sheet. Each choose one of those verses and look them up. church. 
You have a lot of friends who aren't going to go to church. And so you know what you're going to do? Not go to church. This is what we're saying. But it's not just so that you can show up and put your name on a sheet that says I was here. Why do we go to church? To hear God's word. To learn about God. To receive his gifts. These are all things that we do in the church. Can you read God's word somewhere other than church? No. Well, yes. Yeah. Do you not read the Bible outside of church? Oh, yes. All right. So, you can do these things. Can your brother forgive you? Yes. Yes. Right. So these are all things you can receive outside of church. But we primarily receive them at church. All right. <clears throat> In both places, Jesus warns them about retaliation. Guys, turn to Matthew 5, verse 38. Girls, turn to Luke 6, 29. Yes. You want to read it? All right, you can read it. Okay, you need to read like four verses. Yeah. But I say to you, do not resist the evil one who is evil. And if anyone slaps you on the right cheek, turn to him and other also. And if anyone may sue you and take your turn, let him have your cloak as well. And if anyone forces you to go one mile, go two go with him two miles. Give to the one who begs you for him, and do not refuse the one who will borrow. Have any of you ever been hit by your siblings? Yes. All right. When you were hit, did you turn so that they could hit you again? No. I can laugh. I can just like protect myself. I mean, like, okay. We've got we've got one yes and a bunch of no. I hit him back. No. Yeah. All right. Which one? Shh. Based on scripture, which is the right way to handle this? I'm telling you, I can hit you and run away. No, according to scripture, what is the correct way to handle this? Turn the other cheek. If they hit you again, that's on them. You are not to retaliate. All you are to do is just stand there and take it. Is this a very popular American point of view? No. No. But this is why we have this. All right. So, one of the common phrases that came from this is I for an eye. This is a common philosophy. If you do something to me, I'm going to do it back to you. This is wrong. All right. What are the ladies? Do you have a comment? No, that would be ear for an ear. No, and that like, doesn't well, show up in scripture. Like, uh, Michelangelo, like, that would be and did he do it to you? No. no. Alright. Michelangelo. Somebody, lady, Luke 6, 29 to 30. Micaiah. Micaiah? Yes. To one who strikes you on the cheek, offer the other also from. And for one who takes away your cloak, do not withhold your tunic either. All right. So, this is what you shouldn't do. What is a common phrase that comes out of this of something you should do? Rowan. Yeah, I just don't know a common phrase that, that comes from that. I've never been told from somebody, take off your tunic also and give it to him. A cheek for a cheek? Cheek for a cheek. Have you never heard that? No. <laughs> right body part, wrong phrase. I've never heard that. Cheek for a cheek? No. Uh, 
Turn. Turn the other cheek. Turn the other cheek. No, I've never heard that though. Well, it's a common phrase. It's rarely done, but it's a common phrase. How can it be rare or common at the same time? It's rarely done, it's a common phrase. Just like do as I say, not as I do, but people don't really do that either. All right. <coughs> Boys. You are racing to find where in Matthew 5, chapters 5, 6, and 7 is the, quote, golden rule. Girls, you are racing Stop it. in Matthew, or in Luke, chapter 6. Where do we find the golden rule? I found it. All right, Jack, what is it? Um, um, I'm beginning to believe you didn't find it. <laughs> um, Matthew 7, 12. Matthew 7, 12. Around there. That, does, that doesn't make any sense. It, it, it says Matthew right. 7 12. All right. Shh. Okay. <laughs> Girls, who found it? <coughs> Look. It's in Luke chapter 6. Find the golden rule. The golden rule. Luke 6. Did you find it? It's Luke 6, 31. <coughs> All right. So there are a lot of similarities between these things, but there are also significant differences. Your homework, which hopefully I will email your parents because I did not last week and I should have, since clearly you guys didn't do your school. I did not. I did <laughs> All right. So, as part of your homework, you need to give one teaching found in one of the sermons, but not the other. That is your homework. What? We are going to the top now. Oh. Well, that's your homework. Also, if we don't get to it. All right, so Sermon on the Mount comes across as a whole lot of law. Yes, law, 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 and gospel. All right, so everybody should be in Matthew chapter 5. Starting with 21. 
It says, you have heard that it said to those of old, you shall not murder, and whoever murders will be liable to judgment. But I tell you that everyone who is angry with his brother will be liable to judgment. Whoever insults his brother will be liable to the council. Whoever says you fool will be liable to the fires of hell. So, what is anger equivalent to? Murder. Now then, this does, this does not mean if you're angry with your brother, you might as well kill him. It means in your standing before God, when you're angry with somebody, you are guilty of breaking the fifth commandment. All right. In Matthew 5, 27 through 30, you have heard it said, you shall not commit adultery. But I say to you, everyone who looks at a woman with lustful intent has already committed adultery with her heart, in his heart. That means lust is equal to what? Adultery. Adultery. All right. So for those of you who think that you have ever made it a day without sinning, we're very wrong. Yeah. Oh, so Every day. All right. So, I can tell you, particularly when you are an adult, like when you have to drive on the road and other people don't know how to drive. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah, I, I need that. And as an adult, you have lustful thoughts. You will not go a day that you are conscious without sinning. It just takes these two. But it continues. In 31 and 32, whoever divorces his wife, <coughs> let him give her a certificate of divorce. But I say everyone who divorces his wife except on the ground of sexual immorality makes her commit adultery. And whoever marries a divorced woman commits adultery. So divorce is what? Adultery. Divorce causes. That is a much better way to put it. That's how you Oh, it does? Mm -hmm. Sweet. See, when I wasn't sick, I was thinking better. Ah. All right. So, if your spouse wrongs you in the future, do not leave them. Forgive them. Sometimes it's hard. Do it anyways. Wait, do you have to forgive? Yes. If they murdered your what? Mom. Yes. At that point, you should give them your dad also. It's <laughs> kind of like turn the other cheek. It's give them the extra pair. It's like if they take your cloak, give them your tunic. If they kill your mom, give them your dad. No. I don't want to do that. No. That falls into a different category. But yes, you do need to forgive them. Yes. Um, so that is true. <clears throat> there are times that you will not forget. There are times that somebody will hurt you so bad, you will remember it decades later. It is possible that somebody has already hurt you in a way that you will remember well into adulthood. Yeah. Yes. But that doesn't mean we don't forgive them. You don't cling to that. You don't wish them ill. It just means that you have a mind that comes with a memory, and you keep these things. God remembers things, but he still separates your sins as far as the east is from the west. Your sins are separated from you. So, if you gave your dad a Okay. Wow. So really quickly, this this is like such an unnecessary rabbit hole that we're going. Through. But I was being obnoxious. You know, by the time I was your age, I had a mastery of sarcasm, and you guys are awful at it. Okay. So shh, clearly not. Shh. Don't tell people to shut up. So. You have a duty to protect your neighbor. 
You have an obligation to protect your neighbor. Your neighbor is everybody else. If somebody were to come into this room and point a gun at me, one of you should stand between us. Now, don't! Shh. I've lived a good long life, and let's be honest, I don't make great choices. Probably only have another five years. Left. But, shh. But, again, sarcastic. However, you have an obligation to your neighbor. Which is why, if somebody came in this door, I would be obligated to intervene, even at risk to myself, including my life. I have an obligation to every one of you. You each have an obligation to every one of you. More specifically, your parents have an added obligation to protect each and every one of you. So, no, you do not sacrifice your father to whoever killed your mom. Yes. That is ludicrous. Let's go. Or my mom did This is what I'm saying. So, but when somebody seeks to harm you, this is not a reason to seek recourse against them. So, now that we have addressed this, protect your neighbors your family, your friends, even your enemies. All right. Matthew 5, 33 through 37. Again, you have heard it that it was said of old, you shall not swear falsely, but shall perform to the Lord what you have sworn. But I say to you, do not take an oath at all, either by heaven, for it is the throne of God, by the earth, for it is his footstool, or by Jerusalem, for it is the city of the great king. And do not take an oath by your head, for you cannot make one hair white or black. Let you, sip, what, let you say, let what you say be simply yes or no. So, do not take an oath by heaven, heaven earth, earth, Jerusalem. Jerusalem. Don't take an oath by any of those things. And you should probably fill in a little blank underneath the last blank by your own head. Yes? Can I hear Sure. <coughs> so, who has heard somebody utter the phrase, I swear to God? Oh, come on. We shouldn't. You should not hear that. Just let your yes be yes and your no be no. As it turns out, if when you say yes, you do whatever you agree to, or when you say no, you don't do whatever you agree to, you don't have to make these grand, like, this time I swear. Well, if you just would do what you say you do, you don't have to say that. So, let your words have meaning. It really makes me uncomfortable when, uh, like, like uh, I want to say something, but I won't. I know I shouldn't. But uh, lots of weird kids at school, they say, I swear to God, if uh, if you do that again, I'm going to blah, 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 blah. And I'm like, like, it makes me uncomfortable when I hear it. I'm like, no, don't, don't say that. Good. It should make you uncomfortable. Like, that is a really good feeling to have. Like, it should kind of give you a punch in the stomach a little bit. That somebody is swearing to God that they are going to do something. Like, just do what you say you are going to do. All right. 50, or 43. You have heard it said, you shall love your neighbor and hate your enemies. But I say to you, love your enemies and pray for those who persecute you. So, who should we love? Enemies. Enemies. What, which, what should we do to those who persecute us? Pray for them. Pray for them. And this does not mean pray bad things happen to them. Yeah, let's not do that. No. All right. 
Giving to the needy. Beware of practicing your righteousness before other people in order to be seen by them, for then you will have no reward from your Father. Thus, when you give to the needy, sound no trumpet before you, as the hypocrites do, that they may be praised by others. Truly, I say to you, they have received their reward. But when you give to the needy, do not let your left hand know what your right hand is doing. So, what does this mean? Do it in secret. Um, a saying that I've heard is, um, do the right thing even when no one's watching. Okay, so do the right thing even when no one's watching, especially when nobody's watching. So, if you return your a wallet that you found on the ground and you didn't take any money out of it, and then you announce it to all your friends and family, look what I did. You've already received your reward. But if you just quietly return it to the person, this is a good deed. All right. So, does this mean I shouldn't tell my wife when I give money to church? Yes. No. Yes. Actually, don't like. Actually, tell her. I get angry. Like, I mean, if she asks about it. So, what do you think? Should I talk to my wife? We share money. Yes. Happy wife. Happy life. I, that is not from scripture. That, that is an adage that is trying to just have a complacent tone. All right. Should I talk to my wife about our giving? Yes. Yes and no. You shouldn't brag, but you should tell her. Yes. I agree with that. You should I You should be like, I'm just I mean, how do you really it if you're giving money to the like, oh, there's a couple thousand dollars in your account like that. Whoa, who's giving a couple thousand dollars? Mr. B, you have one rich kid store. All right. <laughs> so, my wife and I, when we got married, we became one. We are a unit. We should probably talk about it because it affects her spiritual well being also. However, if I do give money to church, now, probably if I'm giving $10,000, I should talk to them. Yeah. Yeah. But if I have an extra $20 that I give to the church, then I probably shouldn't run home and be like, ooh, ooh, why? Guess what I did today? What? Gave $20. <laughs> All right. If you're, if you're doing, like, favorite thing, like, what you what did today? All right. We are going to skip the Lord's Prayer. We will do an entire section on the Lord's Prayer later. And when you do fast, do not look gloomy like the hypocrites, for they just figure their faces that their fasting may be seen by others. Truly, I say to you that they have received their reward. But when you fast, anoint your head and wash your face, that your fasting may not be seen by others, but by your Father who is in secret. So, who do we, want to, who do we not care about who sees our fasting? No. Other people. We don't care that other people see our fasting. Who should see our fasting? Jesus. We just did this one. You guys need to follow along and stop doing whatever it is that you are doing because it's not following along. Like, literally, we've just been going section by section. In fact, let's see. Um, <coughs> so on this side of the room... We have one blank that should be filled in that's not. Between all of these people, one that's not filled in. 
You guys need to be following along. I think the girls need to be split up next week. No, don't put the girls. <clears throat> well, that's how that works. The girls get split up, the guys get split up. Oh, All right. 619. Do not lay up for yourself treasures on earth where moth and rush destroy and where thieves break in and steal. But lay up for yourselves treasures in heaven where neither moth nor rust destroys and where thieves do not break in and steal. For where your treasure is, there your heart will be also. <coughs> so. All right. No, continuing on. No one can serve two masters. For either he will hate the one and love the other, or he will be devoted to the one and despise the other. You cannot serve God and money. So, which are our possible masters in this world? According to that text. God and money. God and money. Okay, that'd be fine. Assuming you replaced money with riches and not God. Oh my God! Come on, God and yeah, that's fine. All right. Shh. You cannot serve both.